here is my blue GC8 WRF. Chances are you've heard me talk about this in other video. Maybe you see the intro. Who knows? But this is my other car, my third car. This car I've actually had the longest, but for some reason I've never featured it on my channel and I've had this channel going for quite a few months now. And I reckon a lot of people are wondering why. To put it simply, I just can't drive it all the time. For quite a few reasons. Number one, it's not P-plate legal. P-plates are what you see on every car I own. It's basically you have on the first four years of your driving and they limit you on how many passengers you can have, what you can tow and what car you can drive. Unfortunately, power to weight, these cars are very lightweight. You can't have them here in Australia or Victoria. I still do, allegedly, maybe but you're not allowed to, so you're risking losing your license. I'm also on the golden point, which is another thing Australia does, points. Basically, you have 12 points or five if you're a P-plater, and when you lose all your points, you lose your license. And you can lose points by speeding, going through a red light, whatever. So, you gotta be careful in a car like this. Only six Ks over, and you lose your license when you're on the golden point. Now, the last reason I haven't been driving it. This car, unfortunately, got hit by bricks off a house on a stormy day and completely munted the boot. So I'm with Shannon's and I contacted them and we tried organizing, fixing it. I found a panel beater to fix it, back and forth here and there, things didn't work out. I ended up finally being paid out for it and I ended up fixing it myself and finding my own re-sprayer. So I thought, hmm, while I'm re-spraying this, I've always wanted to make the, the mirrors blue, the side skirts blue and match the door handles blue. So I thought, what, a be what better time than do it now? My only issue is, with the painting in blue, my re-sprayer recommended I didn't do the side skirts because he thought it wouldn't stick and he thought the door handles weren't able to come off and be put back on because it would crack. So I ended up getting new door handles for $100 and I ended up just saying send it on the side skirts, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, that's the story. The insurance was a massive headache. It went for four months back and forth. I still haven't even been paid out yet, but I'm getting $4,900 from him. And I'm not going to say how much it was to fix, but I fixed it myself with super impressive parts, which I got someone to respray this World Rally Blue, and I think it came out beautiful. So you might notice that there's no spoiler on this, and that's because the spoiler was an absolute pain in the ass to get off. It took so long, so much labor work, which I did myself, and it's been resprayed, and I just got to put it on, which is simple and easy, and I'll probably do later on. I don't know if I'll put it in this video or not. Another thing is I got a WX sticker going here, which I ordered, it was 40, 40 bucks for a remake. The real one's like $600. It's a sticker for weight reduction. And yeah, I just think it'll complete the rear end once the spoiler's on. So other than that, I've talked about, when I bought my EB video, the most popular video I've done, about why I don't drive it and why I'm not registering it. And that's because this car is left at my dad's friend's house. The EB, which is right there, is left at my mate's farm's house. So I don't have anywhere to leave two of my three cars and the other one I daily at my house and I don't have a garage there. So I'm in this position where I've got two cars I can't even regularly drive but the EB will be driven soon, don't worry about that, it's going to be my new daily towards the end of the year and this thing which will be my weekend car which now that it's fixed I hope to drive it really soon. There she is, the beautiful Fairmont in all its glory. Just ordered new wheels for that, bought new wheels on Facebook, video coming soon, not sure if I'll upload this one video first of the wheels. Or this one. First modification up, the WX badge. Originally I had a very small one here which they put on the Australian cars when I first bought this car because it didn't have one. This is actually what was on it from factory. At the time I got one, the small one off eBay, it was like 20 bucks because I couldn't find these anywhere. A year and a half later I'm doing it again, I can't find the small ones anywhere, I could only find this. Like I said this was 40 bucks, it does say STI here so I'm going to get rid of that but it's super simple, it's just a sticker dead center it, line the R with the middle of the number plate. Should be fine, it's just a stick up. With custom plates in Victoria, you got two options. You have A, completely customize it with a six character thingo or whatever, like six numbers or letters. But to be honest, they're all taken. You want WRX, whatever, whatever you want. Most of them are taken that are good. The other option is you get your standard rego plates, which is this, and then you customize the, what it looks like. So I just went for the Japanese style ones. 
So in Japan, these are exactly as they look in Japan. I thought it suits the WX car. Next, right above it, I have these hood pins. When I first bought this car, it actually had this hood bra kind of look over it, and I didn't realize it had holes under it. I found these holes, I thought, you know what, I'll put right pins in it. Most tracks you go to, if you have a scoop this big, you have to put pins in it anyway. And I don't think they look too bad. I might paint these black one day, but till then, I'm gonna leave. Right above it, you see the STI scoop. This thing's bigger, fits more air in. And then these vents here, they had plastic underneath. I took them out, so these are actually all functional. All three of them are very functional. That's how it looks. I also made these silver instead of orange. I think they just look a lot better. I'd love to make these ones black or silver as well. But we'll get to that in time. As far as wheels are concerned, these are actually the factory standard gold wheels. They're 17 inch thick rubber and I love them. They handle amazing. Underneath that is your four pot Subaru brakes with slotted rotors and they're grouse. They never get too hot and they just perform really well under all temperatures. Like I said with the paint, the mirrors, the door handles and the side skirts, they're all color matched to the body and I think it really transforms the look of this car. At the back, as you see, I obviously just did the sticker. We have the number plate, which looks really nice. And then of course, the side skirts are all point matched. Eventually there'll be the STI spoiler. Next up, this car had a full exhaust system. Now, because of my small turbo, it is still restrictive and boxes don't really sound that loud in general. This is the only muffle on it. It is a Canon. It also does have a very high flow cut and a resonator but I changed the Canon from the original muffler. It used to have a really big muffler, but a generic one. I thought a Canon suits the Japanese style and sounds a bit better. Let's hear it start up. Now time for the engine bay. All you do is undo the clips and pull it up. Now, if you're into WXs or Subarus in general, you'll be really familiar with this engine. This is the EJ207, an iconic Subaru engine they used all the way from 96 up until the latest generation 2022 WRX. The EJ207 is a 2 litre flat 4 boxer engine with a turbo. Boxer meaning the pistons go like this instead of up and down, giving it that really unique rumble. This engine is not original to this car, it's the STI variant of it, which is still a 207, but has a factory tune of 200 kilowatts and just goes a lot better. Featuring stuff like forged pistons, lighter rods, it makes this engine feel a lot more responsive and handle a bit more power. As you can see, this engine bay is not factory. It's had a lot of tasteful mods, which I didn't do personally, but I've changed a little things here and there. With the bigger intercooler, bigger radiator, it helps keep coolness down and power up in this. It has a more high flow turbo, which is getting a bit older and I do plan on replacing when I change the entire engine, but it makes the turbo really snappy and boost really early and really responsive and I love it. More along the turbo, I have a uh, pod air filter. Now, a lot of these pod filters end up being hot air intakes. Not only does it sound grouse, but because it's coming straight from the atmosphere from this, it's not a hot air intake, it's actually a cold air intake and sounds grouse. <laughs> At the end of the turbo is also a blow-off valve, so anytime you get off the boost, it immediately releases all the built-up boost into the atmosphere as well and gives it that iconic sound. I absolutely love this engine and turbo setup. It sounds min it sounds wicked. The boxer paired with the turbo, it just loves it. It loves the power, it's responsive. It makes 260 kilowatts now as well. And I think that is all the power you need in a four wheel drive little car like this. Along with that, we have the STI brace bar here made out of carbon fiber that's connected to the two shock absorber parts. I did redo the shocks in this car. They're now on KYB shock, shock absorbers. I had coilovers in it, cheap ones, and I got rid of them and I put KYB shock absorbers. In Australia, it's illegal to run coilovers. This is completely road legal and I absolutely love them. They're soft when you want them to be soft and they're really hard and nice and firm around corners. Paired with the engine is a new five speed gearbox with sharper ratios because my father decided to blow the gearbox the last time he drove this car. Iconic for a Subaru blowing gearboxes. This five speed is very strong and I stuck with the five instead of a six speed because mainly price, but they're very, very strong these five speeds. Other than that, I've done a lot of work just to keep it reliable. New battery, new alternator, heaps of little ends here and there like it just goes grouse. I never had an issue with this car reliably. I've done one oil seal in the year and a half, almost two years of ownership. 
I absolutely love this setup. All I do is change parts to newer ones, like I want to do a VF29 Turbo and a new short block eventually because this one's kind of having its time, but it still runs absolutely mint for now. Now this part I absolutely love about WX's. Based on the Impreza, the interior is super simple and I love that. I hate complicated stuff. Everything's very accessible, everything's easy, I love it. It's a bit tight, but I think it's really nice. This obviously is a manual and the interior is relatively stock. All the seats are standard. The only thing's changed is I've got three gauges here. Only the boost gauge works, but I want to change these gauges to something more digital. So all three of them work. Other than that, it's got a head unit. This thing's from Japan. This was only made for two years. It's called Eclipse. I've only seen one ever sell on eBay and that was 10 years ago and it sold for like 1500 bucks. This one is amazing. It does all these little things and I absolutely love it. It has little graphics, everything. I think that this is actually somewhat worth a bit of money and I'll never sell it and I absolutely love it. I'm also connect able to connect my phone to it because I've wired a aux cord through the center console up until here, the armrest. Another modification it has is the meth injection. There's a tank in the back, which is just water methanol. It's a very, very concentrated water like alcohol and it really freezes the air going into the engine to make more power. It goes straight through the intake into the engine. There's a little pump. I can control it here when the PSI starts and ends on the boost. I have it really down low so it keeps it punchy and I think it works well. It keeps it more consistent and colder air always in the engine. Other than that, this has a factory Momo steering wheel which I think looks absolutely wicked. I'm probably gonna re-trim it eventually. And except for that, the interior is extremely clean, extremely nice and for someone at 5'9", my height, it's extremely comfortable. Starting the thing. Downshift it. 
got a second. 